I'd like to share with you today is a project, a pretty neat project that I and my graduate students have been working on uh, for a couple of years, uh, in which we hide covert channels in new and emerging forms of communication online. Now, I specialize in information security, uh, code, cipher, secret writing, that sort of thing. And my specific area of research is what we call information hiding. It's also called steganography, which is a fake Greek word which means covered writing. Uh, steganography is the problem of hiding a thing inside another thing, hiding a message inside a picture, hiding a message inside an audio or a video clip, hiding secret messages inside ordinary uh, content that travels over the internet. The primary goal of doing this is achieving private communication in a highly censored environment. If you live in a country where cryptography is banned, privacy enhancing technologies are banned, sensors are monitoring your traffic, monitoring your emails, watching for subversive content, steganography may help solve your problem by concealing your communication in something else so that there's no evidence the conversation is even happening. Now, it turns out this is very difficult to do. It's easy to hide a message inside an image in such a way that you can't see it. It's very difficult to hide a message inside an image uh, without leaving statistical artifacts that can be picked out by forensic software. So we're always on the lookout for new approaches, new ways to hide data in existing things. And every time people start sending a new kind of content over the internet, we ask ourselves, could this be used as a good container for a secret message? Uh, Back in 2007, we began looking into using video conferencing channels to hide secret communications channels. This was because in 2007, Apple uh, ad started adding funny special effects, comedy special effects to their uh, video chat software. Some of you may have used them. Uh, in particular, these effects allow you to replace your background with an image or a video clip. Uh, if you haven't used this facility before, I'll show you how it works. You just, you're just video chatting with a friend, and then you decide to tell the software, oh, I'd like to replace my background with uh, comedy special effects. So first, the program tells you to get out of the way. It then replaces your background with, in this case, an image. This is my office, so now I'm at work, right? We could replace it with a video clip instead if you wanted to. And it turns out you can also replace your background with a computer automation. Which is really neat. That, that in particular is important. Uh, because as soon as we discovered that you could do that, we noticed there was a unique and maybe a little arty way to conceal uh, secret messages in a video conferencing channel. Uh, let me show you why and how. So, sorry, there. A lot of computer animations are driven to some extent by randomness. Uh, so you have a little dancing snowflake animation. What makes the snowflakes dance? Uh, well, a pseudo-random number generator somewhere in the computer, a source of random numbers. And so our animation program calls that source, gets the random numbers, and then uses them to push objects around on the screen and give it realistic random behavior. A lot of computer animations are, to some extent, driven by a random number generator. So this got us thinking. What if we did the following? Suppose we had an animation like this, driven by a pseudo-random number generator. And we reached into the computer and we ripped that program out, got rid of the pseudo-random number generator. And then replaced it with a worker-like, something that pretends to be a pseudo-random number generator. But instead of handing over random numbers, it hands over pieces of a message. Now it turns out when you encrypt, when you scramble, uh, a, uh, a message, it looks like random. In fact, if you do it properly, there's no way anyone can tell. It becomes computationally impossible to distinguish between true randomness and an encrypted message. So let's replace a random number generator with a server that hands over pieces of a message. Now, instead of dancing to randomness, your snowflakes are dancing to Proust or whatever it is you are sending through this server. Now you imagine using this as a special effect backdrop in a video chat application. And then someone who receives this video on the other side just has to have a program that can somehow track the motion of those randomly moving objects. OK. Turn those back into, basically analyze the motion of those objects, figure out what were the random numbers driving this motion, put those random numbers back together into a file, and attempt to decrypt the file. Now, it might not be, there might not be a message at all. That's the point of steganography. You don't know if it's there. 
that if you and someone else have the right key and a message is being sent, suddenly a message will pop out and you have a covert communications channel hidden in the random state of a special effect. Now, well, what's interesting about this is, on the one hand, you can do this in a way so that the presence or absence of a message is statistically unprovable. So it's a truly covert channel. But on the other hand, it's not exactly hidden, is it? It's kind of in your face. We have this funny animation. It's blatant. It's not subliminal communication. It's superliminal. So you are waving your channel in the adversary's face and defining them to find any proof of a covert channel. That's the big idea. And it's a neat idea, but then implementing it, well, it, a lot of work. What we needed to do, uh, and we actually did this over a course of a few months, we had to generate this evil, we had a program, this evil generator that replaces the pseudo-random generator. Uh, a little program that hands over ciphertext, I'll show it to you in a minute. Come up with some nifty and interesting animation. So this is creative, a creative project, like all engineering. Um, and then on the other side, we actually need to somehow write a program that can be, that, that can take the video and get the random numbers back out. That's difficult. There are a lot of problems that we had to face in order to undo the random effects of the channel. Uh, one of them is the fact that your head is in the way. You have a backdrop, and your head is in the way. So how do we figure out the random motion of objects when you are occluding them? Well, we ran a bunch of uh, experiments, and then we estimated over long video conferencing sessions what areas of the frame are most or least occluded, and then tried to design computer animations where the uh, randomness is estimable from areas that are rarely blocked. Now, I have a demo here uh, I'd like to show you. If we can escape out of this for a second, see if this works. Um, this right here, this terminal, this is a server that's been running uh, this whole time. And uh, this is a, uh, just a, uh, we can just hit play to run it. This just generates randomly colored blocks. And you can see on the right side, the server has been set in motion. It's handing over ciphertext. Then the animation takes that and, in this case, turns it into a pretty rudimentary animation, funny colored blocks, where the hues of each column actually uh, encode the message. This can be dropped into a video conferencing session. Uh, it can be used as a backdrop in a lot of things. Uh, we can stop that. Thank you very much. And we'll uh, go back and see if it's awesome. Everything still works. <laughs> OK, so now there's a problem with that. Uh, that. That's sort of a neat idea, but no one's going to want to put that in the background of a video chat application. You don't want to torture your friends with retina searing colored blocks. Uh, you want to have some sort of nifty special effect. And it, we have this general problem that this can only really be used for covert communication if a lot of people actually use special, effect, uh, special effects in video chat applications. This is a, a problem in security, the cultural engineering problem, uh, as opposed to the social engineering problem. It's a completely different thing. Sometimes uh, behavior switches from conspicuous to normal just because of changes in societal norms. For example, in the 1990s, it was uh, a little more conspicuous to send encrypted messages over the internet. Nowadays, everybody sends encrypted messages over the internet. If you bank online, if you shop online, if you check your email, there's a good chance you might be sending encrypted messages over the internet. It's no longer conspicuous here. Uh, likewise, this is only possible if we end up with a bunch of nice funny special effects, and we need a proof of concept that is worth using as a comedy novelty backdrop. So I went asking around the, the faculty if you could put something funny in the background of a video chat session, what would you do? And um, Professor Friedrich in our department says, well, how about rain? So we made a, an example animation that makes it look like it's raining in your office. Uh, and we have random raindrops. It's a little bit hard to see here with the contrast. And you see the uh, ominous rain clouds, which are also moving. All of that is guided by randomness, uh, which is really, uh, which is either drawn from a true generator or communicating ciphertext. Um, you may also see these lightning flashes. Those are not just there for effect. They're actually useful as synchronization markers that indicate where the message stops and starts. These are two of my students that uh, worked on the project and coded all of this up and produced these nice, nice little results. Uh, it turns out that using these animations, we can transmit covertly about 500 bits per second through one of these channels. Now, how much is 500 bits? It's not a lot. 
500 bits is about 30 letters, uh, uncompressed. And so that means that this channel is about fast enough to send instant messaging uh, datagram. So you could have a hidden IM channel inside the video channel that no one can see, which is neat. Uh, now, one last note, though. Uh, well, we do this because it's a lot of fun, but it leaves us wondering, what can we do with this? We don't live in a country where cryptography is outlawed. There's nobody monitoring us, or no one's going to throw us in prison if we start sending subversive content. Uh, so what can you do with this aside from covert communication? Well, once we figured out the problem of how to smuggle data into a computer animation, which we can then drop into other applications, turns out that was a non-trivial uh, trivial programming problem. Uh, we have some other uses for this. Uh, for example, oops, I press twice, I press twice. This is a uh, interactive Blackboard backdrop that I can drop into a uh, photo booth when I record video lectures. Whatever I type goes through and lands on the Blackboard. So this has some other applications, educational, for example. These uh, little gizmos can be dropped anywhere you can put in animation. Uh, for example, presentation slides. And so I'm leaving you with this last slide, uh, which is empty. Or is it empty? Actually, it turns out you may have noticed throughout the presentation we had these funny shimmering zeros and ones in the background. That means I am an engineer, I guess. Well, <laughs> that's actually communicating a message. That's been trans uh, transmitting a message the whole time. This is one of those contaminated background animations. Uh, and that's a message that's been uh, transmitting this whole time. There is no data here. That's a default message when I have nothing to send on the channel. Uh, I find it interesting that uh, all this work to make communication channels, and I end up not having anything to say over it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>